Well, hello. Pull up a chair and sit a spell. We're talking over old times. I'm the public history manager at the historic Schmidt House, Don Trosper, and I thought I'd start us out with some stories dealing with the growth of our South Sound area once we became a territory in 1853. The new territorial capital was in next door Olympia. I found an interesting quote from an article in an Oregon newspaper of that era that was encouraging settlers to move north. Our Olympia Tumwater folks may have exaggerated a little, but here's the quote. Soon after I arrived at this place, a turnip was brought to market weighing 40 pounds. Last spring, I went to the market to buy potatoes and found them too large for convenient use. Last week, I saw a cabbage head weighing from 25 pounds. Much is said about new countries, but I think this beats them all for a bounteous profusion of advantages." End quote. The influx of new settlers was indeed great and didn't only include farmers and loggers, but also businessmen. We have a landmark in Tumwater from one of those early successful businessmen. You'll see near the freeway an old white wood frame house that just so happens to be one of the oldest houses in the state. It's called Crosby House. It's now owned by the city of Tumwater and managed by the Daughters of the Pioneers as a period house museum. The famous singer and screen star Bing Crosby never lived in the house, but there is a connection. The house belonged to his grandparents. The Crosbys were very influential in Tumwater's early development. Nathaniel Crosby was sent west as a ship's captain on the brig O.C. Raymond to bring provisions to the early Puget Sound settlers and was very impressed with the new country. He quickly sent for his relatives back east to come out, which they did in 1850. So brothers Clanrick and Nathaniel bought Michael T. Simmons' mill and began to modernize it and dream of the new future of this little community. In a very real sense, the baton was being passed from our founder, Simmons, to the Crosbys. A new era of business development was beginning for the young town, centered upon the water power of the falls of the Deschutes River. Clanrick Crosby's oldest daughter, Phoebe, remembered those first years in Tumwater for the rather steady diet of salmon, clams, and potatoes, a log cabin to live in, and the nearest neighbors being Indians. Captain Clanrick Crosby did great things for the new sawmill, making it more efficient and productive for lumber production. He also built a much larger grist mill for grinding local grain into flour. It was called the Lincoln Flouring Mill. The Crosbys also ran a general store and became real community leaders in Tumwater. 